my name is Daryl Frazier. Um, I manage uh, Colby and Gale Service Station uh, on Main Street in Damariscotta, Maine. Um, yeah, I've been here for 20 years this year. So. This is a, a basically a generic vehicle checklist. So, um, you know, anytime something comes in, uh, let's say we're doing an oil change uh, or something simple like that, the guys are kind of going to go through and, and walk through the steps. Um, and we've got this um, set up in, in, in different areas, so under hood, under car, and then kind of the finishing touches type of thing. So they'll check certain components under hood, um, they'll check certain components under the, under the car, um, take a look at the suspension, the brakes, um, and then everything gets written down. So we have a kind of a generic yes or no, okay, not okay. Um, and depending on what they find, the guys will jot down some notes. The first part of it is mainly just baselining and, and overall condition and seeing what we might need um, and then we can prioritize off of that. So we do a state inspection. Uh, we use this checklist as well, go off and, and make, the, make the notations as we need and, um, and then again we can, we can you know, build a repair order off of that and prioritize so, what we need so to. So why yeah. is it necessary to have this checklist? Like what would, what would happen before you had these kinds of checklists? Um, we need to have procedures. Um, so if, if, you, if, you don't, you know, if you don't have procedures, you have, you have it's random. Randomness, and, and you can start. Um, if if you don't start on a, a a job with some idea where you're going to go with it or what your steps are, it's gonna you you probably won't fix it, and you'll probably waste a lot of somebody's time and money doing that. Uh, Suppose I came into you with a problem like I said, my car isn't firing well; it just isn't running well. Okay, okay. Then can you tell me like the steps you'd go through? Like how would you solve that problem? The First step is on on before it even gets to the technician is on on my end or whoever's in my service writer or myself. Um, it's getting all the information from the customer. So the more information we get, the better. Information needs to be accurate to the technician, and then he's got to duplicate the concern, um, and then the components get checked. Um, and it can be a, 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 a kind of a, um, a, a ruling out procedure. You know, you'll you'll check one item and say this item's okay. You put it back in. You don't have to go back to it. We know that one's all right. You check the next component, and then you may find that one's bad. Uh, you know, and replace it as as needed. So. This is a great example of a flow chart. GM's really good with this. So the first thing it's going to ask you in there is, is if you performed a diagnos diagnostic uh, system check, which is basically a code scan. So we're going to say yes. It's going to move us to step two. Um, it's going to ask you to start the engine, um, allow it to idle, and can, uh, monitor the misfire counters. So it asks you here, are any of the misfire counters uh, uh, currently incrementing? So which means, are we seeing actual misfires right now? So we'll either answer that yes or no. Um, we're gonna say yes in this case, so it's gonna tell me to go to step three, there we go. And that, you know, that depending on what we answer there, brings us down through, through the next steps. Um, the hope is that going through all these, eventually you'll get to uh, the, the answer, <laughs> fix the right problem. Now. Through experience and, and through um, uh, real world repairs, a lot of times we can skip some of these. Um, we don't always go through every step on the flow chart. Sometimes we can skip ahead uh, and, and check the component that we think is bad. Say, okay, I've seen this 10 times in the last week. It's probably this component. So, so we, we do use the flow charts, but occasionally you can, you can modify them a little bit depending on what you've seen in, in actual repairs on the field. So. You could have a different set of procedures for the same particular symptom on the same make and model of the vehicle with a different engine. There, there's multiple flow charts. Um, they're not, um, they're not necessarily generic, um, so they're, they can be very specific. So you have to have access to flow charts and information for each vehicle make and model and engine and 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 and, uh, and trim package, transmission, all that. Do you ever get a situation where the flow chart? Where you had to kind of think outside the flow chart, and at times where, yeah, you've checked everything on the flow chart, and it's not this specific component, and and uh, what it can lead you back to is is a lot of times something larger than that. So Maybe. it may it may take you out of that flow chart into a totally different area that you need to test. Um, so yeah, there there is the flow chart doesn't always bring you to the answer. We hope that it does, but but there's times when it doesn't. So. <laughs> So there's no substitute for, for uh, analytical thinking then, it, even it, in, with the flow chart? Exactly, yeah. yeah. You don't always blindly go through all the steps yeah. um, and, and hope that it's all done in the end. You still need to be aware of, of why you're doing this, why you're taking these steps and, and, and uh, uh, kind of factor that in as well. Uh,